Welcome to Channel 18 News. I'm Jim Rogers. Robert Charles Vaughn was sentenced to 15 years in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice in a plea bargain agreement in 8th Judicial District Court on Tuesday. He faced three charges, including theft of property over 20000 but less than 100000 bail jumping and failure to appear, and evading arrest, detention, and previous conviction. All of these were felonies. In January 2012, the Dyke man was accused of stealing a Caterpillar backhoe from a crew repairing a bridge on State Highway 69. The man had disguised the equipment to look like a John Deere backhoe. Christian Dior Young was sentenced to 10 years in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice in a plea bargain agreement in 8th Judicial District Court Tuesday. Young pled guilty to possession of a controlled substance, penalty group one, more than four grams, but less than 200 grams. This is the second time Young will go to prison for the same charge. The third time, he will be eligible for a 25-year-to-life habitual offender sentence. The Department of Transportation will host a series of regional public workshops in December and January to gain insight from the public regarding the Federal Enhanced Mobility of Seniors and Individuals with Disabilities program. During these statewide workshops, the public will learn about rural public transit from local providers and help identify and prioritize issues and needs facing this transportation program. The first workshop is set for 1.30 p.m. December 13th at the TxDOT District Office at 1365 North Main Street in Paris. Don't forget the Lights of Life Christmas Tree Lighting Ceremony taking place Thursday, 6 p.m. at the Gardens at Christmas. Northeast Texas Choral Society coming up on its 20th year serving Sulphur Springs and Hopkins County and surrounding counties, about five counties that their membership is from. This weekend they're involved in a Christmas Carol, the musical. And coming up on December 10th, you'll see the Choral Society in a free concert just for you on Celebration Plaza. And then in spring of 2017, you'll be invited to the spring concert. Here's director Carol Allen and Casey Batterton couple of things going on in our in our life as a choral society. We are um, currently involved with the production of a Christmas carol, uh, the musical, and uh, choral society singers, uh, a number of choral society singers are singing in uh, the, the choruses, and um, I have uh, been involved in preparing the singers vocally and helping the choruses and all of that sort of thing. So, as you know, it's a collaborative effort among uh, four of the arts organizations. And we cannot wait. And also, but that's not the only concert you have coming up. Right, right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. We are, for the first time ever, doing something we wanted to do f for the entire time we've been in existence, which was to do a free concert for the community. So we are doing that December 10th at 3 p.m. Celebration Plaza right downtown, a concert, Christmas music um, for, the, for the community, everyone to come and enjoy. And that is something different for Choral Society. Mm -hmm. It is. It's I didn't exciting. know it had always been a wish for you. Always. Um, you know, when you, have a, when you have a choral organization like we do, and we sing with 100 singers, uh, this begins our 20th year this spring. Really? Yes. Um, you, the, the perception of it as um, that choral group, or pe in, in people's minds, it's um, often thought, uh, oh, I don't, I don't like to go and sit and listen to people sing for an hour. It's it's a big hurdle to get over, uh, but once once you go and you hear a hundred voices sing together, then we, we always have the comment every single concert. I will never miss another one of your concerts. People people don't know and understand. So, saying all of that to say the. The idea for a free concert is, uh, it's, it's big with us because we can stand before the public, maybe who've never gotten to come before. You know, sometimes a $10 ticket price or a $12 or $15, that is a, a big deal. So for us to get to just stand and sing, do it for free, families can bring their children, it's down on the square. Um, 
it's the city has been wonderful to be mm. behind us with with this then it's it's a it's like a first time opportunity for first time concert goers and christmas what what better deal right we'll sing all your favorite christmas songs we've kept it uh very familiar so that people can sing along have that song in their heart that they've always loved so and like a present to the community. to the community yes and yes and we do we say thank you to the community we have a wonderful uh group of people who support us in this casey how and why did you get involved in choral society originally um let's see it's been oh i always think back because my son was i think two and now he's turning eight so this is my sixth year as a singer but i have always been around choral society with my parents as charter members um so this time around i think it was actually after having those kiddos it was kind of the first thing that i did um outside of my family, I guess is how I can ex how I can describe it. Just sort of for me and something that I could do that would be special and um, productive and exciting, something in the community. So originally that was that was actually the reason why. Mm -hmm. Probably a lot of your singers have chosen this as something they do just for them because they like to sing. And they've suddenly found all this huge group of other people who also like to sing. Yeah, that's big. It, it is. It's big, and I think we love to sing. There are, of course, we can sing any time. But to have an organization that you can sing with is not something that everyone gets to do. Um, there's high school choirs, but then most of us don't go on to be in college choirs if we enjoy singing. Um, it's pretty competitive and then not all communities have the ability to support a huge chorus mm -hmm. um they are getting more and more popular across america and that's exciting but this is something that's special that not ever not everybody gets to do this and it's kind of cool certainly not every town has a choral society like we do it's true a couple of things in all um I, I read a statistic of a few years ago from the Chorus America site. There are 98,000 choral societies around the country, around the world. This kind of thing um, has... Pe people have sung together this way forever. And choral societies are the best way for this to happen. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention... Case mentioned um, high school choirs and that. I want to give a shout out to Beth Cole at the high school. She's doing the most wonderful job with those kiddos. And sh they they come to us. Some of the uh, high school singers come to us. And also shout out to Erin Lovelady at the middle school. When we have these kinds of uh, singing choirs preparing these youngsters to know what choral music is, to know what it is to sing together, oh, it thrills me half to death that that's going on so big shout out to to both of them mm -hmm. for their hard work for what they're doing i'm so proud of them and so proud of what's going on with them i love how it's starting earlier too the fourth graders yes. with danette lovelady actually get uh on the fourth grade third and fourth grade yes. campus the fourth yes. graders get to sing with her um for the first time in a children's choir and, mm -hmm. and that is really young and new and exciting for, well, for us. And big Wonderful. thanks to our school for keeping music in our schools. You Absolutely. know, it goes away year after year in a lot of school districts. So big, big shout out to them. What I love when I come to Choral Society concerts is the energy of the individuals. I mean, it's not just unison choral singing and everyone's mm -hmm. standing there holding a book, but the the soloists and the parts within the mm -hmm. uh, each composition, the people that project those voices out there, that's really hard work. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's it's uh, the joy of work. It's the kind of work that brings joy, and we do we do work hard. We meet every Monday night uh, from seven to nine, and when the go bell dings. We go, you know, Enola, we, and we, we work hard for two hours. So we basically have about 15 weeks of Mondays to prep some of these really big concerts that we do. So everybody digs in, works hard. And, oh, what a 
joy it is. Oh, my goodness. What a joy. So our Choral Society is uh, involved this weekend in a production and looking forward to your own concert on December 10th. December 10th on the square. Three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, it is rumored that um, a certain jolly gentleman in a red suit will be there to take pictures with the kiddos. And um, everyone that comes will have an opportunity to sing along with us. We may even choose someone from the audience to come up and maybe lead us in a song. We have a lot of happy surprises involved in what we're going to do. We're excited about it. <laughs> For the audience on your December 10th concert downtown at 3 p.m., where will people sit? Right. That's a great question. Yeah. Um, in our talks with uh, city manager Mark Maxwell and Joey Baker, who's been so great to help us out, mm. and Sarah Dykus, um, all with the city trying to make this happen with us, we all just kind of put our heads together and think that the easiest, best thing is everybody just bring a lawn chair, a blanket. Um, there are lots of places to sit in the plaza as well, benches, and of course there's there's walls that you can sit on, um, but if you just want to bring lawn chairs, it's going to be that kind of feeling. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or a blanket even. Yeah. And we may all begin praying now for really great weather. <laughs> that day. And we do thank uh, Mark Maxwell in the city and uh, and Joey Baker and Sarah Dykus. Uh, they've been wonderful to help us plan this and uh, make it happen. Well, in all your Christmas concerts years past, You've certainly had themes for these. Mm -hmm. So is this one, what theme is this? <laughs> that, we titled this one A Celebration Christmas, and it was pretty, um, I think it was pretty organic. It came from titling it after the town and after the plaza, and also mm -hmm. the music feel. It, it is very celebratory and familiar. Um, and it feels like a welcome Christmas, welcome to our town Christmas kind mm -hmm. of message. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and really in, made, a, made a really concerted effort to keep the music, uh, all, all the music that you already know, the songs that you're waiting to hear mm -hmm. every single Christmas. Uh, we do a version of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, uh, and uh, Peggy Williams is our soloist on it. It's just worth it to come hear that. It's okay. a, it's such a fun, wonderful arrangement of it. Well, it's not that many days. Um, we have a little... <coughs> we do have a little bit more time. So just in general, and I don't think we've covered all this before, how a person, once you come in contact with the Coral Society and maybe the bug bites you and you think, I could be a vo in one of those voice parts. How do they get to be members? Well, that's a great question, too, because you definitely can. <laughs> um, we we want that to happen. Hopefully, every concert, someone says, yeah. I want to sing with them. And the cool thing about Coral Society is that we are very welcoming and we want more people to sing with us, especially this next semester, which is coming up in the spring. We're already planning it um, for the first weekend in May. So we will have auditions mid-January okay. that they can come to. Um, there are actually two scheduled audition times, which will be um, in mid-January. And this is a time when they can come with no prepared piece ahead of time. Just come and, and sing. Mm -hmm. Auditions, uh, every singer is auditioned, but it is not a scary process, no matter what you think. Um, I, we just, I, I sing with you, and I hear where the voice uh, goes on the top and where it goes on the bottom. Can you match pitch? Um, so it's, it's not a scary audition, but... Uh, you, it, it is an auditioned group, so um, we need to we need to know that. And a a call out to all of our singers. We love to say in Choral Society that we have no ex singers ever. <laughs> uh, you you are part of the family once you come be with us, and uh, we want them to know they will be receiving a postcard. But we want them to know that this spring's concert uh, is an invitation for them to come back and sing with us as we begin this 20th year of singing as a choral society. 
Okay, Northeast Texas Coral Society, because people come from, really, not just Silver Springs. About five counties. Wow. Yeah, we draw from, we draw from a big area. And, um, goodness, over the years, I was thinking about it this morning, my Facebook popped up about five pictures from four or five years ago. You know how that, that <laughs> deal is. And um, just, just thinking about it this morning, that I wouldn't have any idea how many... I think hundreds of singers have come and sung with us over these 20 years. I would say hundreds. Yes. And so, um, you know, singing with a hundred voices, basically, uh, you, you gather around a, a lot of singers. A lot of singers. We are looking forward to presentations. You are definitely part of the arts community here in Sulphur Springs, Hopkins County, and you're involved in that this coming weekend, and then your own concert on December 10th downtown a big celebration free concert yes ma'am okay and thank you both very much thank you thank Enola. You, Enola. thank you ksst 20 years of support from this dear radio station and enola from you as one of our singers and we are truly grateful for this kind of support all right thank you carol and casey what is better than one local dairy queen two local dairy queens of course that is right, two Dairy Queens will be here in Sulphur Springs. It has been a common complaint by various people that the location of our current Dairy Queen is not very convenient on Main Street, which is a small busy street in the middle of town. But being built on South Broadway is a new Dairy Queen that will hopefully be more convenient for more people. Also being built on South Broadway is a new Starbucks, originally started in Seattle, Washington, the Starbucks franchise has made its way into our little town of Sulphur Springs, Texas, just behind Chili's. Many residents in and around the Sulphur Springs area are excited for this new cafe and hangout. I'm Elijah Drum for KSST Channel 18 News. Here's Don with sports. The Wildcats basketball team defeated Denison 77-35 Tuesday night in Wildcats gym. After the game, I talked with Wildcats basketball coach Clark Cipolletta. We played really well tonight. Um, we were able to compete every single possession, and that's something, as a young team, it's, it's really hard to do. And I, I don't think we've done it yet. And uh, tonight, I think we really competed the entire 32 minutes of the game, competed every possession. We didn't take possessions off, and we were able to, uh, you know, just become more successful doing that. So uh, hats off to our players, man. They played hard. Yeah, they sure did. I think they had 10 of them score. Uh, did a good job of getting the ball inside to Victor, and he, he made all those uh, little short shots. Absolutely. Uh, we, we've, we've saw a lot of zone this year, and uh, I didn't think, I thought we relied too much on a three. We can really shoot the ball well as a team, and, uh, you know, I encourage that. But uh, I think we're so much more better when we're throwing the ball in first. We're kind of an inside-out team. And uh, when we establish Vic in there early, uh, we're able to create more and uh, just put more pressure on their defense. So uh, I thought we did a really good job of that as well. And Bryson Lynn, all he does is hit five threes. I had seven points. That helps. Points, Absolutely. So he was a real sharpshooter tonight. I may have missed one, I think. Absolutely. I thought he really carried the load. Uh, Keontae, Keiston, a couple of those guys didn't shoot the ball necessarily well. And uh, Bryson carried it. That's that's the glory of this team. We have, you know, five or six guys who could really shoot it. So. Uh, Hopefully we're not all off on the same night. And uh, usually if somebody's off, somebody, you know, picks us up on the back end. So I thought uh, Bryson did a phenomenal job of carrying us into that aspect of the game. As a defensive coach, another pleaser had to be for you. Less than nine points uh, per quarter in the ball game and two quarters in the single digits. And you always like that. Absolutely. That's our goal. We want to we um, force teams to under 10 points per quarter. Uh, we, we want single digit quarters. And I think uh, as a team, um, we, we've done a, a really good job of that. I was extremely impressed the first quarter. I think we only allowed three points. We were really getting after it. We were flying around. And uh, if we can keep that type of intensity up and, and defensive effort, I think we'll be okay. 4-0, and oh, but uh, my goodness, uh, what a challenge is coming up. Oh, yeah. Highly rated uh, Class 4A and a team. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only that, but uh, just the words Lufkin says it all. Those are b big guys that can really play. Absolutely. Those are two teams that are going to go deep in the playoffs, one in 4A, one in 6A. And uh, um, they just do a good job of what they do. And uh, they'll just be really competitive. And I think it will be a good um, testament into where we're at, mm -hmm. uh, you know, offensively and defensively. And it will show us some things we really need to work on as well. So uh, we're looking forward to the tournament. Hopefully we go down there and compete. And uh, 
my, my thing is wins or losses don't matter. Just if we can compete 32 minutes, we'll get better and uh, um, we'll go as far as we can go. You call those measuring sticks, I believe, you know, to see where you are. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we always need those. And uh, every tournament we're in this year is going to be one of those for us. We're, uh, all tournaments are going to be highly competitive. And uh, as we go throughout the season, we're just going to play tougher and tougher teams. So hopefully that gets us ready for district. Two 8.30 a.m. starts. So oh, yeah. Make sure those alarm <laughs> clocks are working. I know. It's kind of scary. If we win both of those games, we even play 8.30 Saturday. So uh, oh I like the morning. I don't know if our players do yet. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> so uh, high school kid yet. <laughs> yes, it's tough. But the, the glory of us is um, we do a lot of early morning stuff anyways. We yeah. guys get up here about 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning just to get extra shots. So I'm hoping that might give us a little bit of the edge come 8.30 in the morning. But uh, who knows? We'll see. Very good. According to the latest bracket from Winsboro's Hoop Fest Tournament, as of Wednesday morning, the Lady Cats are in Pool A with Longview and White House. The Lady Cats will play Longview in the Winsboro High School Gym at 1040 a.m. Thursday. They play White House in the Winsboro Junior High Gym at 640 p.m. Thursday. I talked with Lady Cats basketball coach Jeff Chapman about the tournament and Longview and White House. Yeah, it was different from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday, and I understand they're trying to accommodate everybody coming in, and it looks like it's going to be a good um, good tournament. It has some teams that are ranked in there. Uh, Gilmer's ranked, and Winsboro's ranked, and Canton's ranked. I think those three teams, and, but, you know, you don't have to be uh, good to be ranked, so, but I think it looks like it's a good field of... Uh, uh, opponents. All right. Well, tell us. Uh, we'll, we'll start off. We start off with uh, kind of a bugaboo or long beat. Yeah, it started us us off at first against White House. We didn't know anything about them. We were scrambling to get information on them, and we were preparing for them. But now, it's uh, we've known for two days. It's uh, Longview. So we played them last year, and I think it'll be a good test. Uh, hopefully, we'll get up for them. If we don't, it's not going to be good. But uh, we've been struggling up and down this year as of late before Thanksgiving. We got up for Hugo. Um, we played good against, um, uh, I guess, Emory Reigns, but they just came out of volleyball, but we still played well, and we, were, we rose to the occasion. But on some teams that, in our minds, I think, um, we didn't think we were gonna, we needed to play hard on, they, you know, it was surprising. That's why you, you want to get ready for every opponent. Yeah. Longview shouldn't be in trouble getting up for them. We shouldn't. Have some big battles. Should, should not. And we beat them last year, um, the, the last time we played them, and um, to win, you know, they were part of the district. They're not now, but um, we beat them, and I'm sure they didn't like that. It's not going to be hard for him to get his team up to play us. Then you uh, play White House, and uh, they're also in our pool, and, and uh, I don't know much about them. Me, me neither. Um, my, one of my assistant coaches, um, he's getting video on the teams as we, you know, start the dish, you know, well, the tournament, and then as we go. And I'm not sure how much information he has on them since we switched gears and we're trying to prepare. It's so tough to prepare for a tournament because you, you can play anybody. And you're not able to all the time get information on um, each opponent. So my best thoughts is, they got to get ready for me as well, or us as well. And um, if you spend more time preparing and do what you do, it cuts down on trying to get ready for other people. So I'm going to take the road of we're going to get ready and do what we do and see if we can bend to our will and we see if we can make them play the way we want them to play. Basically, you said you're just going to have to show up in a tournament if they're doing something that you didn't expect. You call them out and work on it. Yeah. Uh, uh, a la what but Buddy Hawkins, <laughs> that's what he, he showed, you know, he tried to teach me when I first came out of Oklahoma and being this is our seventh year here, um, he's, he's right. He wasn't wrong at all. And um, if you can adapt and do those things and um, practice as you play, um, condition as you play, do those things, then um, it just gets you ready down the road. You know, and we all know we're gearing for district, but I told the kids, though, I want to 
I'm very competitive. I want to compete and I want to have success against uh, everybody we play because I think success breeds success. And if you're used to being successful and you work towards that and those are your goals, then you're getting closer to what you want in the end anyway. Um, it's not, ain't, nothing's 100%, but um, a good percent of the time, more than not, you have to be prepared for to be successful against half court traps, uh, full court presses, man to man zone, all of it. But it's playing. But if you just say, well, we're we're just waiting for district and not perform and not compete prior to that, then what happens when you get there? You're gonna fall short. That's just my theory, and I don't know if everybody looks at it that way, but uh, I believe that's that's best. It was a tough night Tuesday night for the Saltillo Lions basketball team as they lost at Celeste 62 to 28. Celeste jumped out to a 15 to 7 lead after the first quarter. They led 28 to 10 at halftime. For the Lions, Lyle Bench led the way with nine points, and Matthew Gurley scored seven. Logan Camp had four, Walker McGill three, Trevor Moore three, and Dakota Patridge two points. The Lions are now two and two for the season. They'll play next in a Miller Grove tournament. And the Saltillo JV team did defeat Celeste by the score of 44 to 32. That Saltillo JV team, 3 and 0 so far this season. Thanks for watching Channel 18 News. Have a great evening.